Hello everyone, uh, apologies for the uh, background noise, uh, I've got the dishwasher going on at the moment, um, but I'd just like to kind of uh, just post a, a video really with a, kind of a, an update of a, an idea that I've had which kind of stemmed from Robert's implementation of the uh, waterproof uh, conductive ink which kind of uh, had the properties of being able to generate electricity after salt water has uh, passed across it. Now. There are a lot of doubters out there about it, which fine. If you don't believe it, don't believe it. Don't don't subscribe to the videos. It's as simple as that. However, if you think about uh, the way the um, we can utilise this, we can actually utilise two aspects of what Robert's created into uh, almost a, a, a sealed system. Now, there will be people out there with a, a more advanced knowledge than I've got with regards to. Um, a uh, principle called thermosiphon. Uh, if you just do a bit of a Google, you kind of get an understanding principle. But I've kind of tried to give an indication of uh, how this will work. Now, if I try and find some form of implement to show, so what we've got here is from the sun, you can heat almost like a thermal array that we uh, see on a lot of rooftops nowadays. That supply. Uh, hot water. It generally it's used for uh, your heating of hot water, whether you use it for a shower, a bath, uh, sometimes you know heating of a, a, a property, etc., etc. However, if we take two principles that Robert's got, is obviously you've got a flow of water. So if we take the um, again, have a look on what, uh, what a thermosiphon is. But if, essentially, it's the flow of water in a, in a kind of a loop where you have uh, hot water. That is kind of pushed to a top and then will flow down naturally cool and then it goes around in a circle. Now that's the kind of basics but there's more advanced information out there, just have a look on the wikis. Now if we were to take uh, what uh, Robert's mentioned about the flow of uh, salt water across, if we were to have uh, either uh, multiple, um, which is, I don't know whether you would call them panels or cells etc etc and have this water trickling over uh, in a continuous cycle whilst the sun is up, you have a twofold effect. Is you get generation from this element here, but also with the heat that is actually generated with the water constantly going around in a circle, with the way the um, the monotherm or thermocell properties work, if you were to actually have numerous plates inside a container uh, where this you know water would actually sit on top of or flow around. That itself would almost act like a almost a self-charging battery, I think. Now, I want to build something along these lines, but it's, it's, it's not going to be something that I'm going to be doing over a weekend or not for a next... No. Well, it's not going to be for a while yet. I've got other things that I also want to play around with. Um, but it just goes to show that if we think of how we're going to utilise energy, we, we always kind of utilise it in just one aspect. Ultimately, the, the sun is free. Every day, you know, without fail, the sun will rise wherever you are on the planet. Okay, yes, some people are going to turn around and say, oh, what about North Pole, South Pole, uh, you, know, um, you know, dark winters, etc., etc. Fair enough, fair point. However, the principle is still there for the vast majority of us around the world. This scenario can actually be quite key. And the fact is, is once the sun has gone down, this will and can retain a lot of heat, especially if this is built up over a, a long summer period. This will this will still keep kicking out heat, um, not heat, electricity I believe. Uh, now this is to the actual size, the number of rays, I'm, I, I, don't, I just don't know. Um, it's worth a, a playing around with the concept and you know, if it can be done to power something, I'd love it to be able to power like the dishwasher that I've got on, but whether it will or not, very much doubt it. But who knows, you know, there's a lot of low power um, devices that are out there nowadays, whether we get down to the elements of uh, the amount of current draw that you get from a dishwasher or washing machine or tumble dryer, that's, that's different. But if you were to be able to utilise something like this to provide all your, um, your TV uh, that you're watching uh, for, you know, six, seven hours in the night and also powering some uh, LED light bulbs in a living room and so on, you are getting into the realms of where you're having energy, energy storage which is totally free. I mean, it's, it's got a double fold. Um, on top of that, you could also probably uh, in integrate some form of additional uh, loop to this which would actually also capture enough heat to heat your hot, wa hot water. Um, there are a lot of systems out there. They have um, 
effectively thermostatic controls to stop these things from boiling over and, and pressurising to an extent that they explode. Now, all that is just wasted energy to me, and it should be stored somewhere. Now, if you could store this down here, and um, that is quite happily generating, you know, electricity for how long? Um, my hot water test that I did for the uh, thermocell or um, monotherm in uh, next to boiling water. I mean, I didn't actually test on how long that would actually take to cool down. Next time I will do, I will do a you know, more thorough experiment to show that. But it just goes to show that if we were to store this energy and the cool down rate of this um, of the water could be sufficient enough to be able to supply you with residual power, you know, into the early hours of the morning. Most of us are asleep between 12 and 6. Well, uh, well, probably not Robert, actually, because he seems to be thinking 24-7. But, you know, it's, it, it's something that's out there. It's, um, it's an idea. Um, please, by all means, comment. Um, tell me that I'm crazy. Um, we'll try and disprove it. Um, let's see what happens. Okay, well, thanks.